Happy Wednesday, webheads! Yes, it's another new comic book day, and holy frigid weather, Batman, it is freezing outside. 39 degrees here in Florida, that's insane, it feels like 35, but you know what, that's not going to stop me from going to the comic shop and picking up those comic books. It's another big week, what do I pick up? You'll find out very shortly. Welcome to Spider Slayer's Comic Book Haul, episode 621, the video series where each and every week I share with you what I pick up at the comic book shop, which is Comic Central, located in the city of Sanford. So if you guys are ever in the Central Florida area, stop by, tell them Mike Spider Slayer sent you. They'll provide you with some great customer service, point you in those direction of those comic books and of course you'll get a mysterious black bag and inside will be your comic books so let's take a look at what's inside this week guys it's another bat stack of comics yes there it is there it is so let's start here we're going to kick it off with the independent books this week so we have Cobra Commander, this is issue one, one of the most highly anticipated books of the week for me. Uh, here is the back cover here as it says, caution, the contents of this book is confidential. This unauthorized disclosure of information within is prohibited. So let's take a look at the artwork in here real quick. Let's see, let's see. And I'm just gonna show you these two pages. So it doesn't really spoil anything in the comic book. And obviously we saw kind of the preview art in there as well. So definitely looking forward to this one by far. And it will be covered on Worthy Ones tomorrow. And speaking of more G.I. Joe, we have G.I. Joe, a real America hero. Issue 3. Issue 3. Issue 303. As we have Serpentor on the cover. He's all zombified at this point. But they still have their brains, and they're going to be going after Cobra Commander, the Joes, and everybody else. Good artwork in this comic. The book is a lot of fun. Very curious to see the direction of this comic, where it's going to go uh, going forward. Definitely not what I expected when they got to this number, but it's still a fun read by far. All right, and then we have the Deviant. This is issue three, uh, done by Image Comics. Uh, James T Tiny and the Fourth is the one that writes this particular book murder mystery about a crazy killer santa that just kills all these people and we got to see this one guy that's interviewing the supposed supposed killer in this comic uh at times it could be very gory as you get to see in this page right here definitely a fun read and uh, i'm looking forward to it all right here's a book that's definitely going to be under the radar i don't know anybody who talked about the first issue except me this is The Bloody Dozen, A Tale of the Shrouded College. This is done by Charles Soule. These people are going into space to rescue uh, vampires that are trapped in like the in a coffin in a giant space station that's like a coffin next to the sun. Here, here is the artwork here, and you can see it's like a cross, but all these coffins are there, and it's vampires hiring these, these astronauts to go there and save their you know, her race. So very interesting and different type of style of book. Definitely looking forward to seeing what the second issue has to offer. All right, and then we have the continuation of The Phantom Road. This is issue eight. Great story. It doesn't always come out on a regular basis. Um, curious to see what's going to continue to happen between this trucker and this female as they ran into each other in an accident and they've come across this artifact and this artifact is something much more than uh, you thought it was going to be and it actually uh, creates this like upside down world where they're fighting all these zombies and stuff and you get to see that here on this page so good book as well all right, and so this book, I'm going to read it just because it's a number one, and I'll probably put it on Worthy Ones this week. This is Sonic the Hedgehog. This is issue one, um, and this is about Fang the Hunter. I'll probably read this and then give this to my next-door neighbor as, you know, he's seven years old, and he's a huge uh, Sonic the Hedgehog fan, so I think he'll really appreciate that. And this is a great book for a younger audience out there, so just want to put this out there that it is available for, for kids to read. 
All right, now we'll move on to DC. We have uh, Nightwing. This is issue 110. This ties into the whole Beast World situation as Damien is now, I guess, you know, possessed by Beast Boy's like little spores and he becomes like Mr. Mittens, which is like a, like a, I don't know, a type of like kitty cat, <laughs> raccoon, badger, like I don't know what the hell he is. So here's the artwork inside. Uh, you know, Nightwing, it is what it is at this point. I don't know how long I'll be reading this book going forward. It's one of those books that I've hung on to for so long, um, but we'll see. But I did buy this variant cover again. This is on FOC going from last year still. But this is a badass FO, uh, FOC, badass cover right here. Really great as you get to see Batman, who is a werewolf now, and uh, Nightwing on there. That is so sweet. All right, and then we get to see the continuation, finally, of Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong, issue 4. Hopefully this doesn't get left in the dust with all the other great new comic books that are getting ready to come out. This is a really fun story with our Justice League heroes doing battle against like Godzilla and King Kong's in here and we get to see the Legion of Doom in here, the ones that actually created this whole thing to happen. Again, it's just a fun comic book series. Uh, don't take it too seriously. You know, whenever you get to see Godzilla in a comic, I think it's fun, man. So great stuff. All right, here's Rootin' Tootin' Superman. This is issue 10. He's here, man. He's in the wild, wild west. And he looks like he's teaming up with Marilyn Moonlight in this issue as you get to see them running, uh, running off, or I guess riding a horse in the wild west. Yep, there she is. So this is the first time we've gotten to see her in a while. And uh, I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. I'm not a real wild west, western type of cowboy guy. So I don't know. This issue could be a little bit boring for me, but we'll see what happens. All right, and then we have Wonder Woman. This is issue five, Under the Sovereign's Eye. Um, this is written by Tom King. This book for me is just like, a lot of people have told me that uh, Tom King's books are long-winded, and that's exactly what this series is for me. It's just long-winded. There's this over-explanation and over-dialogue-heavy narration going on forever in this comic book. And it just like it just almost like bores me to death, and you can see that once again in this comic. And it reminds me a lot of like Crisis on Infinite Earths, the way the layouts and the paneling and everything happens. Gorgeous artwork there. Looks like we're getting to see Grail make her return, which I think is kind of cool. I don't think this is necessarily a poor comic, but it just it just might not be my cup of tea at the end of the day. So I don't know. We'll see. So that's Wonder Woman issue five. Then we have new number one here. We have John Constantine's Hellblazer, Dead in America. I'm not a big uh, John Constantine fan. I don't know how much I'll be into this comic. I want to try it out just to see if I can somehow get into the character. If this is going to be a story that does introduce, uh, that does interest me going forward. I just don't know, man. This is just, it's just never been my thing. The supernatural element in, in certain characters just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't tickle my fancy, I should say, sometimes, you know? So we'll see what John Constantine has in this Black Label comic book. All right. And then we have World's Finest. This is issue 23 as we continue the whole Rise of Magog storyline, the Kingdom Come stuff. Uh, Mark Wade's been doing a nice job with this book. The Dan Mora artwork continues to develop, uh, to uh, continue to impress me. And uh, this story has been great as they are trying to stop um this gateway from opening and stuff like that and and trying to stop uh you know boy thunder from you know doing bad things it's kind of cool i i've really enjoyed it so I'm looking forward to the next issue here all right so before we continue on i just gotta give a quick shout out to the web heads out there First shout out of the day goes to Tony. He said, as I'm awaiting the coming of the snow apocalypse, I finally finished reading Murder Falcon. It was absolutely amazing. So now on to do a power bomb. Tony, I am so happy that you got a chance to read one of the early works of Daniel Warren Johnson. Uh, Murder Falcon is absolutely awesome. Thank you for sharing. 
Then we have Troy who's showing off this IDW Transformers cover. This was a prequel to the original series. You gotta love those Transformer covers, man. Classic here as Optimus Prime is fighting Megatron. And then we have Bill who said, hey, 50 cent sale at the local comic shop. Time to fill some runs. Look at that stack of comics he picked up, man. Got some Punisher, some Glow in the Dark Ghost Rider, Wonder Man. Great stuff there. You gotta love those deals. And if you guys want to get shouted out for future comic book hauls, head on over to Facebook. Search my group called Comic Book Corner 2.0 Webheads Unite. And once you follow the guidelines and answer a few questions, I'll approve you and you'll get access to this wonderful community, guys, where we talk about anything and everything that has to do with comics, whether it's the books that you're reading, your most excited books for the week, your hauls, your grails, just everything and anything with comics. And like I said, you never know when I could shout you out on future new comic book days. Halls. So now we move on to Marvel Comics, and guys, what better way to kick off Marvel Comics as we got the first issue of Marvel Superhero Secret Wars, the original. This is the facsimile edition. I did a Comics Coming Soon video, FOC video, and I saw that there was issue two, and I was like, why are they just printing issue two? Not realizing that they actually are doing the whole series in reprint. So that's pretty badass right there. I actually had a comment telling me that as well. And it's funny how this showed up this particular week. So if you've never read Secret Wars before, the original series, this is your time. Go to the shop, buy it, read it. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. This was the first major Marvel events, man. This is where it all began. Uh, great stuff here. Can't wait to dive into that again. All right, so now we have the true number one here. Game War Jackpot, Issue 1. Mary Jane has powers. I'm sure freaking Paul's going to be in this book as well. Because why shouldn't he be in? Because that's part of Mary Jane's life. Yeah, there he is. Freaking Paul. There he is. I, I think people are not going to read this book because they hate Paul so much, right? Looks like there's a lot of action. The artwork looks good. It's bright and vibrant colors in here. Spider-Man's in this comic, so that's a plus. You definitely want that to happen. And, and, and I think that's kind of cool, seeing them fight together hero to hero. So whether the story's any good, that's still yet to be determined. So we'll see what happens with Jackpot. All right, and then we have uh, Jackpot's... <laughs> I act like it's a completely different comic. It's still Jackpot issue one, just a variant cover there. I like this one as we get to see Mary Jane in the new costume. We get to see Spider-Man there going, hey, what the hell? You know, I think that's nice. So I got that one. All right, and then we got Cable issue one. I don't know what to expect here uh, when it comes to Cable, so I'll definitely check it out. I always give these X books a try, and do they deliver half the time for me right now? No, uh, but <laughs> there's nothing better than Cable with a big-ass gun. I mean, that just screams 90s, right? That's the, the, the true essence of the character, man. So cool. So it looks like there's a lot of action in there. Again, same thing like Jackpot. Will the story be any good? Looks like he's come across his younger self in there. That I'm not sure if I'm a fan of. We'll see. All right, another great book, great cover here is we have The Invincible Iron Man. This is issue 14. Uh, nice that we have Forge on there with Rory Williams trying to make this whole um, army of like, I don't know, he's collecting this metal to create an army to stop the Orcus Sentinels. And whoa, man, look at this, Tony. Tony is hooking up with Emma. You know, originally we have this this marriage that was uh, produced out of just out of um, uh, what's it called? Out of oh my god, I can't think of the word. The marriage was just created just because for the sake of the mission, right? And it looks like the relationship has been growing to the point where they feel comfortable enough to do it, right? So that's that's pretty cool, right? Will that relationship last? We'll see. You get to see Rui Williams in space here. Pretty cool artwork. Yeah, man, I'm on board. I love Iron Man. All right, here's probably one of the biggest books of the week uh, besides Cobra Commander. This is Avengers Twilight, and this one's written by Chip Zdarsky. Hopefully, it's a little bit better than his Batman stuff. 
and it looks like we have the Avengers in a much different future, right? And they're a lot older. The artwork is very different. Look at that, man. That is crazy. It's a pretty thick book here. It's a hefty story. Looking forward to reading this. I have no idea what to expect out of this. All as I can say is my boy Jay at the comic shop said, Mike, if you're expecting something from Avengers Twilight, you're going to be not disappointed. He just said, it's definitely something different than what you expected it to be. So I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. All right. And then we have Cap Wolf and the Howling Commandos. This is issue four. Great series, guys. I'll, I'll recommend this all day long. This is just a fun comic book with Captain America being the Cap Wolf that he is, taking on Nazi soldiers that also change into werewolves. I mean, that's comics for me, man. Just fun, good time to escape your everyday reality. All right. And then we have the continuation of, uh, of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. More werewolf action in here. So we have Beware the Werewolf by Night of 2099. So that's who Miguel O'Hara has taken on this time. Artwork, maybe not as dark, as gritty as maybe the previous two stories uh, that you read. It looks like almost too cartoony. But uh, again, we'll see how this story is, right? So uh, I am anxious for that. All right, more X stuff. We have X-Men issue 30. So we got that as we get the X-Men dealing with the high evolutionary in this comic book. So we got people coming out of the woodworks to, <laughs> to take advantage of our X-Men. <laughs> what is happening in this comic book? That's not the artwork I expected. Oh, God. This is not good for me. Oh, this is great. Oh, sorry, man. Ooh, that might be a hard pass right there. All right. So let's move forward. We have The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 42. There we go. Legacy numbering 936. As the gang war uh, does continue here, we'll get to see what kind of weird action and fighting is going on this time. Last time we had... Kingpin and uh, and Tombstone headbutting each other or kissing each other, kicking each other in the balls. I don't know if that's a real gang war, but it looks like we see a little bit more Madam Mask in this issue. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, there's a little bit more in-depth plot going forward here because we've seen a lot of fighting at this point. Then I wound up getting this variant cover, which I thought was kind of cool and different. And then I wound up getting this variant cover, the 1 in 25 for Amazing Spider-Man issue 42. This was a, a $13 comic, so I thought that was a nice price for that. And then, of course, I did get a couple other variants this time. I got the Secret Wars issue 1 foil. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the facsimile and the foil. I think it's just a cool story to have in, you know, in your collection in general. So... That means I would have every issue of Secret Wars except issue one, the original printing. Then I'll have all the facsimiles and then I'll have all the foils. So that's kind of cool. And then I put that one on my FOC as well. This was the Avengers Twilight uh, foil cover as Captain America is driving that motorcycle. That's pretty cool too. So there you guys have it. There is the haul for the week. I want to know in the comments below everything that you picked up or join the Facebook group. You can show it in pictures and stuff like that. It's absolutely free to join. And if you love my content, there's always more content for you to click on. In fact, this is my top 10 most anticipated comics for next week. And as always, guys, support the local shops. Keep buying, keep collecting, but always remember, read those comic books. Guys, I'll see you real soon and have a great new comic book day.